Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Jide Remix Mini, which is a small device that you can plug into a television or a monitor to run Android applications on a big screen. And we've seen a lot of devices over the last couple of years that do something similar, but most of them have been sort of media-centric devices for running Netflix and YouTube and Hulu and other video applications, uh, or maybe some games. This can do all of that, but it also runs a custom version of Android called Remix OS, which is designed to make Android feel more like a desktop operating system. There's a desktop here, we've got a taskbar, a status menu, an app launcher, and when you run applications, they are in resizable, many of them at least, are in resizable, repositionable windows that allow you to do sort of desktop-style multitasking. And we'll go a little bit more into that in a moment. But first, let's take a quick look at the hardware. Uh, this version that was sent to me by Jide for testing sells for about $70 at retail. There was a Kickstarter version that actually had an even lower price, but uh, for $70 what you get is 2 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, and uh, an ARM Cortex A53 quad-core 64-bit all-winner processor. It's kind of a mouthful. Uh, it's a low-power chip, it's a small device, measures just about uh, 3.9 or 4.9 by 3.5 inches across by 1 inch high, uh, small enough to hold in one hand, but it does feel a lot like using a desktop computer until you sort of run into the problem of running Android applications that are designed for touchscreens on a device without a touchscreen. Uh, we'll get into that again in a moment, but let's take a quick look at the hardware here. We've got a uh, power jack, 10x100 Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, a um, HDMI connector, micro SD card slot, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And that's it for the ports. There's no fans inside the case, there's no ventilation, there's no power button, and there's no status indicator. So for power, you just press the top of the device and it turns on, and you can press it again to put the device to sleep. And since there's no status light, it can be kind of difficult if you're having display difficulties or if your uh, monitor is just turned off, it can be kind of tough to tell if it's turned on or not. So that's a little bit annoying, but uh, it's just a design decision that was made apparently for whatever reason. Uh, the operating system itself is something that shows a lot of promise and that has come a long way since I first tested the uh, the version running on the uh, Remix Ultra tablet in March. This, uh, this version is based on uh, Android Lollipop and it is highly customized to really feel more like a desktop operating system. Uh, it includes a file browser, it includes uh, as I mentioned, this taskbar and uh, desktop environment. And let's take a look at some of these features. Now, I'm using it with a combo uh, touchpad and keyboard that uh, is wireless here and plugged into one of the USB ports. I've only got one more USB port, so to plug everything else in, I'm using a USB hub so that I can plug in a uh, USB flash drive and an Xbox-style game controller. So first up, let's just take a look at web browsing and how we get to web browsing. So first, let's go ahead and open the app menu here. Uh, you can see that there's search. We can uh, change how it's arranged by name, date updated, usage. I'm just gonna launch Chrome. And while it's loading, I'm gonna show you that we could also have right-clicked on it and pinned it to the taskbar or viewed, uh, viewed the uh, app details. Uh, pinning it to the taskbar means that it'll be permanently placed here. And if we minimize it, uh, the indicator shows that it's minimized, now it's maximized. Uh, now it's really maximized. So the first time you run most applications, they're going to run in full screen mode, because that's just sort of how Android is used to doing things. But you have minimize, maximize, and or resize, and uh, close buttons up here on the top that look very much like the ones you would see on Windows. What you don't usually see on Windows is a back button. Uh, since you don't have the uh, the same button layout as you would on a Windows device here, or on a regular Android device, uh, back button has been built into the navigation for most applications. So we can resize it, uh, we can scroll, and it works pretty well. Now, you can access just about anything that'll load in the desktop version of Chrome and the mobile version, but you might have to uh, go into your settings and request desktop site if you're viewing sites that automatically redirect you to the mobile version because they will think that you're using a mobile device. Also, if you wanted to do two uh, tabs, you could do that, but you can't separate the tabs out into separate windows. Uh, you could install a second web browser, like the Dolphin web browser, which I'm going to launch here, if you wanted to do side-by-side -side windows so that you could have two different websites open, one in each. So we've got a little feuding on the one side, and let's open it again on the other. So we've got two web websites side by side, loading independently of one another. And, uh, and that's sort of one of the special things here. Now there's no window snapping. I can't just like drag this to the side of the screen. 
and have it automatically stay there, but I can resize the window manually by grabbing the edge or the bottom. The corner also works. So that's web browsing, and again, it works pretty well. Uh, we could also, if we wanted to, run Office applications. So I'm going to go ahead and open up, actually, Microsoft Excel. You could also use Google Docs if you would prefer. Now this is the mobile version of Office, so it's not going to have all the features you would get with uh, a desktop version of Office, but it does have a lot of the features that allow you to view and edit documents. And if you did want to do Media Center applications, Kodi works pretty well here. And just for kicks, I'm even going to use the uh, Xbox controller to navigate here. Okay, Seeking is having some issues here. But play and pause works, and we can also use plugins to watch online video. Now the device does support Bluetooth and uh, 802.11n Wi-Fi. Uh, wireless performance is pretty good considering it's just uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Although I'm having issues clearly right now because I'm trying to shoot a video. Okay, so in that one, we're not having any problems getting Seeking to work. So that's videos using Kodi. Now, you can use pretty much any media center application you'd want. Uh, Netflix and YouTube also work just fine. What about gaming? Depends on the game. Uh, I found that some games work perfectly with the Xbox controller. Uh, other games don't. So uh, you can find more details about my experiences by going to lilliputing.com. But let's just load one that works pretty well here. This is Wind Up Night. Now, I found most games work best when you do run them in full screen mode. If you try to run them in Windows, sometimes they won't even load or you'll run into other problems. And if you're, uh, if you're having any problems with that, you can go into the app menu or the app settings and choose an option that says enable full screen and restart application. So this is a game that was designed again for touch screens, but which works really nicely, I think, with an Xbox controller. Now, if you tried emulators for games that were designed for physical controls, I think you're gonna have an even better experience. So you can play your uh, Nintendo or PlayStation style games, should work pretty well. And the processor is up to the task of running most games that are optimized for Android, as long as you don't die. So let's go ahead and close that. And Asphalt 8 works pretty well. Riptide GP2 works reasonably well. I had a couple of issues with it. Let's find one that does not work very well and hope it doesn't take too long to load the game. 
So this is uh, Dead Trigger 2, which does support a gamepad, but I found that it can just be a lot of work to set it up so that it's going to work properly. And I do sometimes see these like little bars here at the bottom of the screen when you're supposed to be running a game in full screen mode. Okay, so we've got the gamepad, but in order to get it to work, there's, you choose the button for fire, you choose the button for reload, and so on and so forth. And there are all these options, and there's clearly more options than there are buttons. So I think if you're going to play a game like this, you're really going to want to have to uh, have your mouse nearby as well so that you can click on the screen for certain things because... Uh, otherwise, you have to map possibly more buttons than you even really have. Um, so rather than go through all of that, I just wanted to show you the uh, the tedium of setup. Now, if you can get it to work properly, you know, the game's a nice little zombie shooter, but uh, there you go. Likewise, when I tried using Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, a game that was originally designed for, you know, desktop-style computing, it works okay with a keyboard and mouse. If you plug in the uh, the game controller, though, the camera angles just start spinning and spinning and spinning. So your results might vary depending on what kind of application it is that you want to use. Um, I think really, you know, the, the key here is that you can run multiple apps at once. You can run them in desktop style windows. Some applications don't like to be resized, which is a little bit weird, uh, especially considering um, some of the apps that you would most want to resize, like Google Hangouts, a chat application, which would be great to run in the side while you're watching videos or surfing the web. Hangouts doesn't like to be resized. So there's still some work possibly that uh, that could be done on Remix OS. And this particular device has a not super powerful processor. It's a little bit faster in some tests than something like a Google Nexus 5 or a uh, Google Nexus 7 tablet from 2013. But by 2015 standards, it's not super fast. And so, you know, I found that from time to time I get error messages or applications won't load or crash or, or cause other problems. But if you're looking for sort of a cheap device that not only can play video from YouTube and Netflix and so forth, and not only can let you surf the web, but can also let you edit documents and do everything else. Um, you know, it's basically a computer. It's what you would get if you took existing Android applications that are not really optimized for, for desktop style tasks or desktop style uh, input, made them a little bit better through operating system uh, tweaks and then put them up. But um, you know, I've, I've run into some difficulties. So, for instance, Firefox uses the same rendering engine on Android as it does on the desktop. But when I tried to use it to, uh, to edit documents uh, in the... Basically, I tried to write the review of this computer using the WordPress administrative website uh, for Lilliputing.com. And when I did that, uh, typing, there was a huge amount of lag. Now... In this case, I'm just having problems apparently staying in the text box. So, I mean, you can see that there are some quirks that occur here. But uh, overall, I think it's an interesting effort. I think the main reason to get something like this is not necessarily because you expect it to be a completely perfect replacement for a desktop computer, but because you're interested in trying Remix OS, and it's really one of the most affordable ways to do that. Um, it's kind of like buying a device that costs less than a top-of-the-line Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire TV, and getting the ability to do a lot of what you can do with those devices, but in a more desktop-style environment. So if you wanted to be able to, uh, to play games on your TV, watch videos on your TV, and so forth, or if you're just looking for a cheap computer for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience and expectations for Windows or OS X or uh, um, Linux-style computing, uh, there are well over a million applications available from the Google Play Store that you can download and install on this device. And, uh, and so as an entry-level computer for $70, it's kind of neat. Now, again, there are other devices out there that might offer even better specifications for the price. But uh, through much of 2015, Jide has been releasing software update after software update, showing that they really uh, are taking the operating system seriously. And it's a nice looking operating system. You can see here uh, sort of notifications and... Um, the calendar, the volume, here's notifications. There's a option to automatically hide the taskbar, do not disturb mode, special settings menus. They have their own file browser built in. 
So there's been a, a lot of attention, I think, paid to making the operating system feel more desktop-like than you would get with an, a regular Android device. And, um, and so, yeah, I think, I think it's a neat device. I'm not sure that I would want to replace a desktop with it. I'm not sure I'd want to replace an Amazon Fire TV or, or another you know, inexpensive uh, media streamer with it. But if you're interested in trying Remix OS, and uh, I think it's an operating system that shows a lot of promise, and this is a, an interesting way to do it. It's also a tablet OS that you can use with a keyboard and, and uh, uh, if you wanted to turn your tablet into a sort of laptop computer, this is the desktop version and this is the entry level version. So it's the Remix Mini uh, PC and my cat is having fun with the camera, so I think it's time to go. Uh, Remix uh, Mini PC sold for about $70. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and this is Puck making a cameo.